Hello, in this video I am going to teach you how to find the natural frequency of a beam using finite element method. In finite element method, a beam has two nodes, at each node it has two degrees of freedom. So here it has V1 and Theta1, V1 is displacement along the vertical direction and Theta1 is the rotation. Similarly at node 2 it has V2 and Theta2, V2 is displacement along the vertical direction and Theta2 is rotation. Okay. This is the general equation to calculate uh, the natural frequency of any beam or bar element. Here the equation is K minus M omega square into U is equal to F. This K is the stiffness matrix for beam element. This is the equation for stiffness matrix of beam element. Here this E is Young's modulus, I is the moment of inertia, L is the length of each element. Then M is the mass matrix. Okay. Mass matrix, there are two types of mass matrix are there. One is consistent mass matrix and another one is lumped mass matrix. Okay. The difference between consistent and lumped mass matrix is in lump consistent mass matrix the mass is uniformly distributed throughout the element. In the case of lumped, matri lumped mass matrix the mass is accumulated only at the nodal points. Okay. The equation for consistent mass matrix is rho A L by 420. Here rho is the weight density. Weight density means the unit will be Newton per meter cube or Newton per mm cube. A is the area and L is the length of the element. At lumped mass matrix, rho A L divided by 2. Here also the rho is weight density which means it is Newton per meter cube. And A is area, L is the length of the element. Okay. So these are all the basics about beam elements. Okay. Mostly we may have a fixed beam. So if the beam is fixed here, so consider this as an element. This is element number 1, it has node 1, node 2. At node 1, it has V1 and Theta1. Similarly, at node 2, it has V2 and Theta2. If the beam is fixed at both ends, then V1 is equal to Theta1, that is equal to V2, that is equal to Theta2 is equal to 0. Which means, if it is fixed, both displacement and rotations are equal to 0. If the beam is simply supported, which means it is V1, Theta1, here it is V2 and Theta2. If the beam is simply supported, then the vertical displacement is equal to 0. It may have the rotation. The vertical displacement alone, it is equal to 0. Now, this is an example problem. Here, the question is, consider a fixed beam of length 1 meter. Young's model is given. Area of cross section is given. Moment of inertia is given. And the density is given. Now the given data are length is equal to 1 meter. Young's model is 2 into 10 power 11 Newton per meter square. The area of cross section is 30 into 10 power minus 3 meter square. The moment of inertia is actually given in mm power 4. We must uh, convert the mm power 4 into meter power 4. It is 100 mm power 4. I have converted it into meter power 4. Then the density is 7800 kg per meter cube. This is actually the mass density. But in the equation we have to substitute the weight density value. So I have multiplied 9.81 to get the weight density. Now we will construct a drawing. Okay. So this is our given element of total length 1 meter. I am going to split this 1 meter into two regular elements. So this is element number 1 and this is element number 2. The node numbers are 1, 2 and 3. At node 1, the de degrees of freedoms are V1 and Theta1. Here it is V2, Theta2 and at node 3 it is V3 and Theta3. Okay. So first step to solve the problem is to find the stiffness matrix. Consider the element 1 alone. The stiffness matrix equation for uh, beam element is Ei divided by L cube and I have written the equation. For node 1, I mean for element 1, the E is 2 into 10 power 11 that is given in your problem and I is given, L is given. Substitute the value of length and calculate the stiffness matrix for element 1. Okay. So here the properties are same for both element 1 and element 2. So we will get the same 
stiffness matrix for element 2 also okay so now to simplify the assembly purpose you must uh, number uh, the stiffness matrix so the node i mean the element 1 has four degrees of freedom here you can see that it is v1 delta 1 and v2 delta 2 so i am going to write v1 delta 1 v2 and delta 2 similarly here also it is v1 delta 1 v2 and delta 2 the element 2 has v2 delta 2 and v3 delta 3 so in the stiffness matrix for element 2 we will write v2 delta 2 v3 delta 3 v2 delta 2 v3 and delta 3 so now we have calculated the stiffness matrix for element 1 and element 2 the next step is to assemble the stiffness matrix see the beam has uh, 6 degrees of freedom so the global stiffness matrix size will be 6 cross 4 now i am going to assemble the stiffness matrix here we have 160 so you just write 160 and you can number it it is v1 delta 1 v2 delta 2 v3 delta 3 similarly here also it is v1 delta 1 v2 delta 2 v3 and delta 3 okay so first consider uh, the element 1 the v1 v1 is 12 so write 12 here then uh, v1 delta 1 is 3 v1 v2 is minus 12 v1 delta 2 is 3 similarly we have delta 1 v1 is 3 delta 1 delta 1 is 1 delta 1 v2 is minus 3 delta 1 delta 2 is 0 0.5 so similarly you just write all the values here delta 2 v1 is 3 it is minus 0 0.5 minus 3 and 1 now consider the element 2 so here we have v2 v2 is 12 already we have a value for v2 v2 so you just add the value it is 12 plus 2 then v2 delta 2 is 3 so it is plus 3 then we have minus 12 3 then we have plus 3 plus 1 minus 3 0 0.5 minus 12 minus 3 12 minus 3 3 0 0.5 minus 3 and 1 put 0 in the remaining cells okay. so now we have assembled uh, the stiffness matrix the next step is calculation of mass matrix so the first uh, mass matrix it is for element 1 so the mass matrix here I have considered the lumped mass matrix so in the problem they have not specified any uh, mass matrix if it is not specified we can select any one of the equation so here for simplicity i have considered the lumped mass matrix the equation is rho a l by 2 and a 4 plus 4 matrix the rho is weight density a is area l is the length of the element for element 1 the rho is given a is given l it is 0 0.5 because i have splitted the overall beam into two elements so it is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 so we can substitute all the values then we will get a matrix like this 57.38 0 0 0 0 57.38 0 then the element stiffness i mean element mass matrix for element 2 it is m2 so the properties are same for both uh, element 1 and element 2 so we will get the same values here okay to assemble the mass matrix we can number it the element 1 has v1 theta 1 v2 theta 2 it is v1 theta 1 v2 and theta 2 similarly the element 2 has v2 theta 2 v3 theta 3 v2 theta 2 v3 and theta 3 okay so now uh, the assembled matrix will be in the size of 6 cross 6 in the assembled matrix this is for the total uh, structure so it has two elements and uh, 6 degrees of freedom it is v1 delta 1 v2 delta 2 v3 delta 3 so here also it is v1 delta 1 v2 delta 2 v3 and delta 3 so now we can assemble it in the element 1 
the V1, V1 is 57.38. So just like uh, assembling the uh, stiffness matrix, we can assemble the mass matrix also. The next is 0, 0, 0, then it is 0, 0, 0, 0, then it is 0, 0, 57.38, 0, then it is 0, 0, 0, 0. Then consider element 2. The V2, V2 is 57.38. Already a value is there. So you can add the 57.38 here. Then the next is plus 0, 0, 0. Then plus 0, plus 0, 0, 0. Then it is 0, 0 and 57.38, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. You can put 0 in the remaining cells. Okay. Now the global matrix is k minus omega square m into u is equal to 0. So actually uh, there is no external forces here. So I have marked the force vector value as 0. So now we can uh, substitute the values of k, omega square and m uh, in the equation. So this is our global stiffness matrix k which I have calculated and minus omega square and the global mass matrix which I have calculated. So this is our general equation. Now in this equation we must substitute the boundary conditions. So the boundary conditions are very important and in the problem it is clearly mentioned that the beam is a fixed beam which means at node 1 and at node 3 both V1 Dta1, V3 Dta3 is 0. So here the boundary conditions are since the beam is fixed the boundary conditions are V1 is equal to Dta1 is equal to V3 is equal to Dta3 is equal to 0. So if the V1 is 0 then the first row and first column of both stiffness matrix and mass matrix will be neglected. Then Dta1 is 0. So the second row and the second column of both stiffness matrix and mass matrix is neglected. Then V3 is 0 which means the fifth row and the fifth column of both stiffness matrix and mass matrix is neglected. Then theta 3 is 0 which means the sixth row and sixth column of both stiffness matrix and mass matrix is neglected. Now you can write the remaining things that is 160, 24, 24, 0, 0 and 2, 24, 0, 0, 2, minus omega square into 114.7, 0, 0, 0, 0. It is 114.7, 0, 0, 0, into V2, Dta2 is equal to 0. So now, to find the solution for this equation, I am going to take the determinant value is equal to 0. So determinant of 160 into your K matrix then minus omega square into your mass matrix is equal to 0. Now uh, we can multiply the 160 inside the matrix. You will get a matrix like this. Then uh, by finding the determinant of this 2 cross 2 matrix we can find out the value for omega. So this uh, is the value for omega. Omega is equal to 5.785 radian per second. So this is how we have to calculate the natural frequency for a beam element. In the same manner we can also calculate the natural frequency for um, the beam element using consistent mass matrix also. So I have uh, uploaded the notes for uh, calculating the natural frequency by using consistent mass matrix in the description. You can also refer that. The first step is calculation of K matrix for element 1. Then for element 2 then the global K matrix then the second step is calculation of mass matrix for element 1 for element 2 then the global ma mass matrix then the third step is applying boundary condition then the fourth step is finding the solution thank you